compared to the very first example we had, we might have too many elements. And if it comes from a practical uh, situation where we create results and look at collections of those results, we'll call them outcomes, we might have too many. Or we don't know exactly what they are. We don't know them. We are just interested, interested in how many there are. There might be too many to list. I might not be able to list them all. I could look at examples. Sure, sure. And it's definitely a good idea. Looking at examples, checking if I understand what the set and the restriction is, is. But I'm not really going to count one by one how many uh, elements a set has. So first of all, we want to say in words. But let's, let's just say let's let's give the set a name. Uh, given whoop, what's that? given a set, let's call it E. We have two ways of saying this concept. In words, it is the number of elements in E. But, and there's nothing wrong with that, it's a little wordy to write that every time if it happens a lot. So we translate to that to a mathematical symbol, and as simple as it can be, we have to have the set name, and then we have two fairly long lines on either side. In some books, this is the correct name. In some books, they write it N, and then in brackets the set name. Because they feel, ooh, lines around the letter is apparently very confusing and intimidating. So let's make a letter and then brackets, because that's better. I don't know. It's not better in my opinion, and it's also not the actual symbol. But if you write either one, I will understand what you are saying. So you can choose. In the book, I will use the actual correct way, but feel free to swap between them. So it's totally fine. If we know the set, we know exactly what's in it, then the number of elements, just as a very simple example. Let's suppose I know, I go back to my little Scrabble letters, that are curly brackets. Let's go A, C, E, and F. Random set. Then the number of elements in that set is four. So E, without the lines, is a collection of things. With the lines, it's a number. Yes, they're connected. They're very different things. I can't add sets together. I can add numbers together. The way I combine sets are with unions and intersections and those kinds of things. So these are very different things, though they are connected. Now, if I make another one, let's say F, um, I don't know, K, L, F, then the number of elements in F will be three. E union F, is a, a new set where I combine them the way the union wants me to, and it'll be throw them all together. The number of elements in the union, well, if I can, can see them all, it's as simple as counting them at seven. 
But what if I can't see them all? What if I can't see them all? If I make another set, let's call it G, and I make that F little g h. Now E union G, it's easy if I can see them all, throw them all together, A, C, E, F, G, and H, because there's only one F. And the number of elements in that union is six. So if I look at the first situation, four and three make seven. Sure. But here, G had three elements as well. Four and three made six. Because of what is inside the sets. That sure, if they have nothing in common, then the number of elements in the union will be the two respective numbers added together. If you want to visualize that with a Venn diagram, uh, let's call this the simplest case. Simplest case, Venn diagram first, two sets. I will use the same letters, though they're not that those specific sets necessarily. I have some set E, and the other set F doesn't have any overlap with E, so F sits over there maybe. So in simplest case, uh, no overlap. Or the intersection is empty. Then, if I am interested in the number of elements that I would have if I throw them together, it's as simple as looking at the number of elements in each one and adding them together. Count each circle separately because they are very much separate. Does everyone agree with that? That if they are just two separate collections, then if I want to know how many there are in total, which is the union really, then it's as simple as adding them up separately, looking at those numbers. Good so far? All right. But of course, that, that case doesn't always happen. More often, there is an overlap. So let's visualize that general position of two sets. We've done that before. I can't assume that it's empty. Like E and G, they have something in common. And if I don't know what the, the specific elements are, <coughs> I have to assume there is potentially an overlap. So that's the more general case. Overlap is possible or I don't have enough information to know it's not. Then the question is, what is the union? Without me knowing the elements at all. Well, let me zoom in on this. Now, in the book, I think I used an A and a B, but whatever, doesn't really matter. Now, let me make it simple. Let's get some color going here, let's go pink and see, well, I know what the union is. It's the two circles together. That really gives me three, or three separate regions. I'll call this one region one. And let's go blue. I also have this middle region, which is separate from one. And I also have the third region. Color well, just makes everything easier and nicer to look at. Of course, you don't need color. Let's call it three. So, if I wanted to have it look similar to before, because I am looking for the number of elements in the union, I want it to look similar. Then I want 
two started out at least to look the same. However, let's see what we have. Included in counting E only, I count region one, and I also count region two. Let's put a plus between them just to abuse the notation a little bit. Is everyone happy that when I'm counting the number of elements in E, it's region one and two. When I'm counting the number of elements in G, it's region, ah, color switching. It's region two and <laughs> keep disappearing on me. Where's my pen now? Now I, I upset you now? Wow, I really did upset him. Not happy. Wow. <coughs> that doesn't mean it. You're gonna be okay. Oh, he's, he's not okay. Let me unplug everything and see if that makes a difference. Yeah. Let's see. Otherwise, we'll switch to the board. It's not a problem. Uh, it seems to be sort of back now. Uh, also, region three. It's a little lighter, but I just want to change my pen. Thank you. There we go. Okay. So now, in in counting, which is what I'm doing, I'm counting the different elements in a combination of collections. In general, in a counting problem, in order for me to get the right answer, there are two important check boxes that I have to uh, consider. Uh, they're not super complicated, but I do want to mention them. Uh, let's say counting. My pen is now. Okay. Counting. Um, Correct. I changed the blue. Wow, this is obviously a Monday. Counting correctly, I have two checkboxes that I need to check. First of all, I want to count or consider everything that we should. That means I don't want to miss anything. I want to count everything I should be counting. I don't want to miss something that actually should be included. Now, if you consider this first checkbox and our Venn diagram, <coughs> counting the union of E and G, E with G, am I considering everything I should? Am I missing anything? No, the only thing I'm not including is the outside, and it shouldn't be. <coughs> so I am definitely considering everything. But the other uh, checkbox is that I have to count everything, or each element, let's say, each element exactly once. If I count things more than once, then my answer isn't correct. Like if, I, if someone asks me how many people are in the room, and I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I count them over and over, my number's not correct. And that's the problem that we're doing over here. I'm counting, when I'm counting the number of elements in E, I'm counting region one and region two. And then when I'm moving on to G, I'm counting region two again. So if I leave my calculation like this, it's not correct. The, the blue regions count as one. So my number is more than it should be. Now, how do we correct this? we need to take away one blue region because we added it twice. The pink and the green is good, but not the blue. So I need to take away region two. And then I have pink region once, blue region once, green region once. Now, the, in terms of E and G, what is the name or the representation for that blue region? 
starts with an I. It's the intersection. Now, I have counted each element exactly once, and I know my answer is correct. And it's because of that overlap that if I just look at each circle separately and uh, add those numbers together, I've counted things more than once. And my answer is not actually right. The Venn diagram just helps me to visualize uh, why I need to subtract and what I need to subtract. How does that feel? Hmm? No, we have to count it because of the problems that are coming up. Because we're going to have um, objects with different properties, and then those properties are going to get combined, and it's going to create something like this. Now, this formula, every now and then, it's handy to remember. Yes, I can go through the whole thing and and figure it out again. But it is something that might be handy to remember. It doesn't come up with every question, but it does come up every now and then. There's a way around it, but it's a longer way. And the formula, like any other formula, is there for convenience. So remember it, don't remember it. It's not a deal breaker, but it has its convenient uh, uses. Please remember to click the like button if you enjoyed the video and to subscribe if you want to be notified of more videos. Thank you.